Hello, it's Bart from Nature Manufacture. I will show you how to play with modular castle and dungeon pack. I will show the features that we provide with this asset. They will help you to customize and build your scene materials and prefabs. The first feature that I would like to show you is the decal. Uh, decal is available at HDRP and URP render pipeline. It's because built-in doesn't have enough options and advanced projectors. So what could we make using decals? First of all, we can add some stains and leaks. For example, we simulate water, which makes the wall dirt. You may notice that decals could affect base color, smoothness, ambient occlusion and normal. Where we did use all those features. For example, at ice decal, you may notice that if I turn off the normal, you will see normals from objects under the decal. If I turn off smoothness, it will stop looking like ice. You could really play with these decals and add some nice effects to your scene. You may notice that you can place them on the wall. It's not super flexible, but it's enough to customize your scene at the end. Similar to decals, we made flat 3D meshes. First of all, we have an object which used like a decal, but it's a 3D mesh. It's basically because it uses cathode material and all the ornaments are marked at alpha. Uh, what we could do with those ornaments, for example, if I go to the vertex painter, which is provided with the pack, you may notice that I can customize this rune a bit. I painted it with only the R channel and I could heat or decrease the heating of the rune. Let me adjust the marker a bit and heat the rune so it will become an emissive uh, object. It really gives you an option to customize models at the scene. For example, the head image on the gate wall. Uh, let's paint it uh, as well. It's really cool effect and possibility. In the same way, but I would say more complex, we built a magic gate at the scene. Uh, first of all, let's go to its material. You may notice that in the material we set emission to blue color. Uh, what else we did need to do? We create a gate object. We duplicated models that we connected to a level of detail system. One of the objects we call near and this mesh become painted with our vertex color so it becomes a source of blue emission. We place the near object as the level of detail zero while the non-emissive mesh is on the level of detail one. With dithering we get a nice effect when the player or camera becomes near the gate uh, it starts to shine. When I move the camera, now gate changes its look smoothly. It could be really nice effect for a game when players explore the map. In the same way, we hit the runes inside our temple object. We make them emissive around the altar. Now this place has a magic touch and is more interesting. Okay, if we're talking about vertex color, I could show you more deeply what effects we could achieve with it at our shaders and materials. First of all, if I paint uh, this pavement with a vertex red channel, you may notice it becomes wet. But if you go to the material, you can notice there is a switch button, so the material becomes wet or heated. The second vertex color feature is that you may paint snow cover on the pavement surface or decrease it. Green and blue channels are responsible for the amount of snow at the surface in a bit different ways. Let me show you an example that will better show you the possibilities of vertex color painting. What is the difference between green and blue vertex color? For example, let's take this roof and you may see that the roof has snow cover which depends on height if we go to roof material, you may notice that we have Velu, which is responsible for position when snow starts to appear. 
there is also value uh, responsible for the angle which allows cover in this example snow texture to appear okay but what does this have to vertex color uh, if we place the roof below the snow we will start to paint it with a vertex color blue channel you may notice that nothing happened it's because blue channel is uh, responsible for overwriting snow cover but it still uses settings and limits that allow cover to appear let's place it higher and now you can see we can paint and modify the cover and it's visible let's now paint by green channel vertex color so you can see the difference with a green vertex channel you can place even more snow this snow crosses the material top cover rules and if you move the roof up and down it does not disappear that's the big difference between green and blue vertex channels in our shader they can cover your material differently it's a cool feature that helps you to customize scenes and paint cover texture in places where it shouldn't appear by material definition you can see that you have really big control over the surface with these materials and shaders connected to vertex color of course you can restart vertex colors and bring back the original look of the model let's stay with vertex coloring a bit just to explain how to handle snow or any cover in interiors without changing uh, material which will uh, save you uh, draw calls uh, you may notice that at our buildings at the scene snow was cut out from the interior walls how we did do that it's because we made a script which we called painting collider it will help you to cut snow from larger areas without using a painter which can be a slow but detailed way to do this we took a floor object to be more correct we took its collider we set it to convex and expanded it uh, a bit mostly up and down to catch the middle part of our tower we set a specific vertex color on the painter and we just simply click paint this removes snow from interiors it's not only useful for interior interiors but you can paint snow or remove it with spheres or any collider that you want it is very useful in the scene build process you can do this in a bigger area which if you would like to paint via marker would take a lot of time this is how we remove snow from all interiors after you place painting colliders you can globally paint the whole scene at once open tools then nature manufacturer and painting collider manager with it you can paint or restart vertex colors at the whole scene or via selected colliders this will speed up your workflow and help to fix any mistakes remember that vertex color generates one problem vertex painted mesh generates mesh clones which are scene data the scene file starts to grow but even if it's big remember that vertex data are compressible things so the final file is small to finish the vertex color tutorial part you may notice that uh, you can paint via vertex colors our uh, river and lake object to to modify behave of the lava surface you can heat or decrease the emission of the river you can change the direction and speed of the lava flow uh, with lava and volcano environment 2023 which we use to build that scene you can build your rivers and pavements inside unity and with its flexible tool set speed up the development of your scene the last feature or script that we will talk about in this tutorial is light manager it will help you to improve fps with multiple dynamic or mixed lights on the scene and screen unity itself doesn't have any system to handle that there is no way to remove the refreshing shadow on the cpu when light is hidden behind the object 
or not visible inside the building. Make note that the scene is pretty big and it contains interior and exterior parts and this could really kill the CPU with dynamic lights. That's why we designed a script for you, uh, you to handle this. Managed light script has two values. Uh, shadow calling distance is used to call shadows without uh, turning off the light. Light calling distance which will turn off the light at all so it won't refresh shadows. Let's set call distance shadow to 5 and light to 15. Uh, let's place light and cube so we will get a shadow. We have to add light to the light manager. After we click play we will see the light and shadows will appear and disappear when we are closer to the light object. Remember that you can have more light managers at the scene. For example, uh, you can set different values for interior and exterior lights. Just add this light to proper managers and you will have two light layers with different settings. That's all for this tutorial. I hope it will help you to build scenes. There will be more tutorials, for example, about shaders and splines usage, which speed up the development of the scene. See you soon.